Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about ventilator associated pneumonia, commonly referred as VAP. Ventilator is a device that supports the process of breathing by pumping air into the lungs of a patient who cannot breathe naturally. What is pneumonia? Pneumonia is an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both the lungs and the air sacs may fill with either fluid or pus. Here is a picture which describes the difference between a healthy lung and a lung affected with pneumonia. When we see the left lung which is healthy, the picture of alveoli shows how a healthy alveoli looks. On the other hand, the right lung which is affected with pneumonia we can see the picture of alveoli which is inflamed and filled with fluid or pus. Now, what is VAP? Ventilator associated pneumonia in simple terms is a lung infection that develops in a person who is on a ventilator. Clinically, ventilator associated pneumonia is defined as a hospital acquired pneumonia that occurs more than 48 hours after mechanical ventilation. VAP is of two types, early onset VAP and late onset VAP. Onset within 4 to 5 days after tracheal intubation is taken to be early onset VAP and onset after 5 days as late onset VAP. The most common causative microorganisms may differ between these two types. Now, the common risk factors for developing ventilator associated pneumonia are elderly people, malnutrition, underlying lung disease, artificial airway or nasogastric tube, colonization of dental plaque with respiratory pathogens, bacterial colonization of the oropharyngeal area, aspiration of subglottic secretions, head of bed either less than 30 degree or after surgery. Common pathogens of VAP are in gram-negative bacilli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and acinetobacter and gram positive cocci includes staphylococcus aureus coming to pathogenesis of vap the main pathogenic factor in the development of vap is biofilm formation within the tracheal tube and micro aspiration of secretions vap is usually caused by gram negative bacilli or staphylococcus aureus via micro aspiration of bacteria that colonize in areas such as nasopharynx oropharynx and gastric fluid pool and area just above the endotracheal tube cuff. Aspiration of colonized fluids from any of the above sources into lungs can result in pneumonia. The presence of an endotracheal tube also impairs cuff and mucociliary clearance. Suctioning also contributes to ventilator associated pneumonia. Clinical presentation of ventilator associated pneumonia includes tachypnea, tachycardia, fever above 100 degree Fahrenheit, increased WBC count, increased purulent tracheal secretions, crackles in lungs, worsening oxygenation, hypoxemia, and PF ratio changes. Now, how is VAP diagnosed? Through chest x-ray which shows new or persistent infiltrate, cultures like tracheal aspirate and blood cultures, CPIS that is clinical pulmonary infection score which is above 6, bronchoscopy or bronchoalveolar lavage. Now how is ventilator associated pneumonia managed? VAP is mainly managed with IV antibacterials like linozolid, amikacin, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, ceftazidine, tazobactam, piperazoline, imipenem, Silastatin and other more antibiotics. These antibiotics depends upon the sensitivity to particular organism growth in the culture. Prevention of VAP Generally, in hospitals, for patients who are on mechanical ventilator, VAP bundle is followed for preventing ventilator-associated pneumonia. VAP bundle is a set of evidence-based interventions related to disease process that when executed together results in better outcomes than when implemented individually. Now, here are some evidence-based practices to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia. First comes hand hygiene, 
using gloves appropriately. Next is semi recumbent positioning that is head and elevated 30 to 45 degree unless contraindicated. This can be done with the help of angle indicator which is present on the bed. Next comes oral hygiene with 0.2% chlorhexidine. Oral hygiene should be done in every shift in order to prevent aspiration of oral secretions which may sometimes slip down into trachea when the ET tube cuff pressure is inadequate. Next comes peptic ulcer disease prophylaxis or PUD prophylaxis or stress ulcer prophylaxis. Generally, H2 receptor blocker or proton pump inhibitors are given in order to increase gastric pH and minimize bacterial colonization that reduces the risk of VAP and GI bleeding. Next comes DVT prophylaxis that is deep vein thrombosis. It remains part of the ventilator bundle in order to prevent other serious complications that could increase the morbidity and mortality of these patients and should be retained. Commonly applied DVT prophylaxis include low molecular weight heparin pharmacologically and mechanically DVT pump or stockings. Next comes sedation vacation and spontaneous breathing trial in short SAT or SBT. This topic we have discussed in detail in one of our previous videos and the link is given in the description below. Next comes aspiration of subglottic secretions. ET tube should have subglottic secretion support so that the secretions formed above the ET tube cuff can be easily removed. Next comes endotracheal tube cuff pressure monitoring. Normally, endotracheal tube cuff pressure should be maintained between 22 to 32 cm H2O. It should be monitored frequently after suctioning, after positioning the patient and after head or neck movements. If the cuff pressure is not monitored frequently, then the secretions present above the ET tube cuff can slip down into the trachea. Next comes aseptic suctioning. Suctioning should be done only if there is a proper indication because suctioning can also contribute to VAP. Next is eliminate routine saline bronchial lavage because the bacteria may dislodge from one area to the other. Next is drain condensation in ventilator tubing down and away from the patient. These are some of evidence-based practices for prevention of ventilator-associated pneumonia and the number of interventions may vary from hospital to hospital based on their policies. And these are implemented in hospitals through bundle checklist in order to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia. Few of the links are given below in the description for your reference. So this is all about ventilator-associated pneumonia. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.